Hello, friends. How does this look? Is that a blurry background? This better be working. Fast autofocus. Does this look good enough to you? Shit. Fuji cultists are brimming at the beaks because rumors have descended from Mount Fuji down to us. A man who knows a man who knows a guy who knows a man has got word that the X-T4 is coming out in February or, or March. Sometime before the Olympics. But there's rumors. Rumors. And I'm here today, my friends, to talk about the X-T4. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Oh my god, I'm dizzy. Yeah, that spinning and singing thing was a much better idea in my head. For those who aren't in the loop, no, I haven't gone crazy. Uh, if you want a full explanation of what was going on there and you're into cameras, camera gear and that sort of stuff with a heavy peppering of comedy, then go check out Camera Conspiracies. The dude is a total legend. All right, let's actually take a look at these X-T4 rumors and I'll give you my take on what they would look to someone like me who's creating content here on YouTube. So I shoot these YouTube videos on the uh, Fuji X-T3. I use it for social media photos. I uh, take the camera on holidays and traveling. I sometimes even take the camera to work just to get city photos as well. So this is important to know because uh, some people just shoot weddings. Uh, other people just want to chuck a pancake lens on there and keep it in a small bag or a handbag. Other people are just shooting action sports like F1 cars. Uh, you know, some people are only doing video things. Some people are only doing photography things. And I think the reason why these discussions get so back and forth on the community uh, when it comes to new cameras is because Fuji have to take all these sort of voices and uh, then decide what they need to put in the cameras to ultimately sell the most units. So the first thing I'm seeing here is it's meant to be shipping in March. Uh, this would mean it's only been on the shelf for like one and a half years instead of its full two years. Allegedly it's coming out early due to the 2020 Olympics. Uh, that's cool, you know, I don't need an updated model uh, so the release date doesn't really bother me. I can't imagine why it would bother anyone else uh, but it's meant to be coming out in March. The X-T4 will have a newer, smaller IBIS mech. Now IBIS is in-body image stabilization. This is when the actual body of the camera has image stabilization. Uh, your lens can have image stabilization, but by having stabilization in the body, it can also bring stabilization to lenses that don't have stabilization. And if your lens does have stabilization and the body has stabilization, you get double stabilization. Double stabilization, that's a word. Uh, so for me, having IBIS in any sort of body is, is a no-brainer. It can only be a good thing. Uh, but there are the naysayers who don't want IBIS at all. And as far as I can tell, the IBIS naysayers is that uh, it's just unnecessary cost and uh, size increase to the body. But to me, this is kind of lunacy. Uh, you know, I've been on Fuji uh, Facebook groups for years, watch hundreds of videos, read heaps of reviews on the XT cameras, and everything I saw after the X-H1 was announced with IBIS, everyone was like, oh yes, Fuji, IBIS, IBIS, IBIS. And when the X-T3 didn't have IBIS, by a long shot, that was like the biggest criticism. Everyone was like, oh, the X-T3 doesn't have IBIS, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so to me, it's blindingly obvious that if Fuji can get an IBIS mech into the X-T4, then do it. Like, why wouldn't you do it? It's the thing that everybody's been asking for. Uh, you know, we all know the X-H2 is going to come around at some point. It will also have an IBIS mech. But, you know, they can jam-pack that camera with heaps of other features. That's going to be their flagship camera. You, you don't need to cripple hammer the uh, X-T4 just to make the X-H2 shine. Uh, this, I'm filming right now on the 16mm 1.4, and it doesn't have image stabilization at all. It's one of the older lenses. So having an IBIS body uh, for me on this lens would be, you know, would really help out with handheld filming or shooting in low light. I do a lot of uh, food photography and uh, shooting in restaurants. It's always super dark there, so... There is a number of scenarios where IBIS would help me out even with this lens. So to go on from this, the X-T4 is reported to be one third of an inch thicker. I already saw people complaining about that. A third of an inch, that's like, for us Aussies, that's 0.8 centimeters, which is also basically the size of a grain of rice. Uh, I can 100% guarantee you if you took my X-T3 now, added a grain of rice length to it, I'm not going to notice it. You know, I come from DSLRs, I had a Canon 7D forever, the size increase is inconsequential to me. Uh, the minute size increase to shove an IBIS mech in there is a crazy, crazy trade-off, so I'm looking forward to it. The X-T4 is allegedly going to shoot 6K 60p, mate, mate. 
I shoot 4K on this camera right now. This is what I'm recording on. Uh, just to copy this file to my computer is gonna take like 10 to 20 minutes depending how long I roll for. Uh, then when I shove it into DaVinci Resolve, I gotta optimize the media so that the file can actually run uh, properly. Uh, PS, if you're shooting with H.265 files from your Fuji and it's running like shit on your and DaVinci Resolve, check out my video, I'll link it up there. It'll make speed things up. But you need to use optimized media and that takes time. So 6K, 60P, these files, mm, utterly useless. I, I would argue that it's useless for 99% of people in the real world. The X-T4 is also allegedly gonna support anamorphic ratios. See, now this is kind of cool. Uh, you know, Siri, Siri, is that how you pronounce it? Just brought out an X-T3 anamorphic lens at a super reasonable price compared to traditional anamorphic lenses. So, you know, if I ever wanted to shoot B-roll like JJ Abrams, then, you know, having that de-squeezing functionality in camera would be super handy, but, you know, let's get back to reality. It's not really, it's not really a game changer, but that's something cool in there. Uh, now, finally, the holy grail for content creators is going to be the flippy screen. When you're a one-man band doing YouTube videos like this, you really need to see yourself for framing. Otherwise, you, you'll shoot 20 minutes of video and then you'll you'll realize that you're actually over here and you, your stuff's out of focus. Um, so even here, for this X-T3, I ended up buying a camera cage so I could attach things to it and I got a cheap external monitor. It's a little bit of a pain to assemble. I need to keep screwing the thing off and on because uh, I don't like to use the cage when I'm out shooting photos. But when I do video, I need to attach all the bits and pieces to it so I'm gonna get it back in the cage. Um, so that's a bit of a hassle. The external monitor was pretty cheap. It was like 100 to 150 Aussie dollars. Uh, but this thing chews up battery like nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, it seriously gets like 45 minutes of battery uh, on one charge. I had to end up buying like four Sony NPF batteries and I'm never, uh, I'm just constantly Re recharging these things. So if the X-T4 had a flippy screen, then I wouldn't need to bother uh, screwing this thing in and out of the cage. I wouldn't have needed to buy the external monitor. I wouldn't need to buy the batteries. I wouldn't need to keep charging the batteries. It's just all a pain just to shoot some videos like this. Uh, so like I said, in the beginning of the video, other people have legitimate uses for cages and external monitors. You know, if you're shooting music videos or whatever sort of video production you're doing, you're probably gonna want a monitor and, and all your bits and pieces. But for a generic F-grade YouTuber like myself, you can get away with a simple flippy screen. It's incredibly useful. So I, I would say that if the IBIS was the most cried out for feature on the X-T3, then the flippy screen was next in line. So anyway, that's my take on everything. If the Fuji X-T4 has IBIS and a flippy screen, then I'm almost sold from day one because it would make my day-to-day -day life and shooting a lot easier. Uh, Maybe you're also wanting these features, maybe they have no impact on you at all. Just because a new camera comes out doesn't really detract anything from the X-T3 or other Fuji cameras. In fact, I still see people posting amazing images from the X-T1, uh, X-Pro1, X-T20. But for me personally, I'm trying to push out these videos uh, you know, once a week, twice a week, whatever I'm doing. And anything that can help up that process is going to be super helpful to me. So drop your thoughts on these Fuji X-T4 rumors down below. Keen to see what you think about it. Thanks for listening to my rambles, everyone, and have a good one.